The economic and social turmoil that followed the collapse of the Soviet Union has resulted in untold numbers of personal tragedies. While the end of communist rule has led to many positive political and economic changes in people's lives, it's also led to family breakdown, growing poverty and an increase in alcoholism. One of the saddest social indicators is the number of children now forced to live and work on Russian streets. It's a totally new phenomenon. Today, estimates show there are one million homeless children throughout Russia. In St. Petersburg alone, there are 16,000 street children. It's a situation Russian President Vladimir Putin has summed up as the most threatening of his country's economic and social indicators. The whole system was destroyed, and the system of values was destroyed as well. And many people, they don't believe in their future. They don't have any ideals because uh, they don't believe in that ideals which existed in the former Soviet Union, and the new ideals uh, hadn't been invented for them. The relations of people are destroyed, and parents uh, don't take care of their children. <laughs> Max is 13, and Yuri 11. They live in the eastern suburbs of St. Petersburg. They sleep in the attic at the top of this eight-story housing block. In the winter, they sleep in the basement. This is our cushion. We sleep on it. We use it instead of a pillow. When it is warm, we use our jackets as a pillow, while the cats sleep on this one. This is our typical food for the day. We eat macaroni, dry pasta. We don't eat hot food because we've got nowhere to cook it. This is our hiding place. We hide all the most important things here, but they always go missing. This is our bed. We only got it today because the previous blanket here was, well, someone privatized it. Well, it was nicked. And these are our kittens. We took them away because a woman wanted to drown them, and we felt sorry for them and took them to live with us. They live here. We feed them when we have food, obviously. This cat is mine, by the way. I have a female cat, and he... This is my cat. He is a Tom. Max and Yuri have been living here for the last eight months. They ran away from home for different reasons. Yuri was being beaten by his alcoholic stepfather. Max's mother is dead, and his father was never at home. They've abandoned school, and neither wants to return home or to move to the government shelters which have been offered to them. They met on the streets when they were begging. It's me who has to protect him. Yes, usually he protects me. But it sort of depends. Sometimes I feel sorry for him, especially when his mum tried to take him home the other day and he started crying and tried to run away. And then I felt sorry for him. He only just escaped. It all starts with little things. My stepfather gets drunk and starts beating me up for things like I haven't thrown the rubbish away or done the dishes, just for little things. Three months ago, my mum met me and I told her that I'm not coming back home. She tried to frighten me by saying she would tell the police. I told her either live with me or the stepfather, but she didn't care enough and walked away. Sometimes I cry when I think about my mum. Most street children in St. Petersburg hang around the metro stations to beg from passing pedestrians. But these are some of the most dangerous places in the city and a magnet for criminals. We come here every morning, day or night. We come here to these kiosks and we start begging. Sometimes we ask for change and sometimes we ask for food. Sometimes we have to collect empty bottles whenever we can find them, and then we sell them. 
From six or seven in the afternoon, we try to get money for the computer games. We get back from the computer club about eight in the morning and sleep until late, five or six in the afternoon. Computer clubs have sprung up throughout Russia. Frequented by young boys and teenagers, they stay open all night, a haven for pedophiles. And yet sometimes Yuri and Max feel safer staying here at night than sleeping in their attic. There, men have already threatened them several times. For me, the most dangerous thing about living on the street, in attics and cellars, is paedophiles. That's the most dangerous thing. I know lots of people who have been abused. If someone I don't know approaches me, it's really scary. That's the most frightening thing. Like that man with a knife last night. He was really dangerous. I was petrified. We had to run away from him to lose him. To tell you the truth, I know people who are working as prostitutes to find money for themselves and their families. For instance, Masha, her mother drinks, she hasn't got a father, and she has a small brother to look after. In the last few years, the St. Petersburg authorities have set up a force of special child-friendly police to help and protect the growing number of children who live on the streets. I personally know three good policemen. I can't stand the rest of them. We run away from them, of course, and try to hide from them. Because if they pick us up, they take us to the police's young offenders unit, and then the pile of papers grows and grows and grows. And then, oops, right, boy, it's your turn. And then it's special schools, reform schools, shelters, orphanage, and then possibly prison, depending on how old you are and what you've done. New teams of social workers have also been introduced, but they are very few, and, like the police, they're not always trusted by the children they're supposed to be helping. The solutions they offer, like state shelters, are often not appreciated. There are lots of social workers and people who pretend to be social workers. I don't trust them. Some of them can work for rapists or maniacs. Even if they are good people, what can the social workers offer anyway? Special school, shelter, or a flat where you can live with a family? But it's dangerous, and we are afraid to go there. Our children's homes are outdated, big prison-like institutions that house 150 to 200 people. The children live in huge rooms like army barracks, and there is no personal attention to anyone. Children, of course, run away from this life, partly because of the violent behavior of other children, the older children or the supervisors. Vera Smirnova works for the NGO The Protection of Children. She and her social work colleagues visit the children on the streets several times a week to offer their help. Social work in modern meaning uh, has never existed in uh, Soviet Union. That's why uh, our methods of work and our approaches had to be changed. I think that we need more social workers now. Sometimes we need to visit these children several times, many times, because uh, some of them don't feel, uh, don't rely upon adults. And we need to, keep, uh, to have many contacts with them before they start to believe us. There are about 30 
different kinds of job children are doing. Children usually start collecting bottles or begging when they first come to the street, but very soon they are getting involved in uh, criminal activities, involved in prostitution. Uh, they start using drugs, drinking, uh, smoking. Many children turn to glue sniffing as a way of coping. They say it also helps to reduce hunger. But prolonged use of glue can cause brain damage and affects both their emotions and intellect. You become funny, you hallucinate. First of all, you feel weak and then the other way around. You feel good. You can do whatever you like. Hallucinate. Like you think of something you want and then it feels as if you've got it. This drop-in centre, run by Médecin du Monde, offers girls and boys who live on the street medical, social and psychological support. The number of diseases contracted by children is escalating. We have to deal with a high number of burns and injuries, several illnesses connected to drug addiction, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, and then there's HIV and AIDS. We get many girls coming to our center who are involved in the sex business who make money for drugs and for the things they need by selling sex. The blood test results in 2001 showed that every tenth child whose blood was tested was HIV positive. And don't forget, we're talking about children aged between 14 and 18. Dima has been living on the streets for the last four years. He frequently runs away from state shelters. He's been ill several times and visits this center when he needs help. His parents, like many others in St. Petersburg, sold their city center apartment to opportunists, leaving the entire family homeless. They were alcoholics and beat him. Misha, the center's psychiatrist, uses tests to gauge how Dima is coping. He has a lot of mental problems and uh, he has a lot of uh, bad experience, beating and uh, some uh, sexual exploitation uh, because he met some uh, adult, for example, uh, I mean some man who uh, exploited uh, him, who exploited him. He has spent a lot of time in the street. He can't uh, stay into any shelters uh, more than five days because he's a very aggressive person. I think he will be a criminal. In two or three years he will be sent uh, to the prison or to the hospital with some of the uh, disease. I think there are no other way. When Dima isn't staying with some man he met on the street, he lives here, in this derelict car. Russia should think about its children, right? Those children can still be, become uh, normal citizens, can become mothers, can become soldiers, can become uh, workers who will work for, for the prosperity of Russia. Right? And uh, if we do not support them now, they will become street people, uh, useless people who will be a burden to the state. Now we've got only one generation of street children who are uh, in the age bracket of, let's say, 7 to 18. Right? And most of them will grow up and have their own children. And this will create uh, street people. 
Street children miss out on their education. Svetlana, though, is one of the lucky ones. She's back at school and has a future. She's safe and has been reunited with her family. It wasn't long ago that she too was on the streets looking for food when her mother became too ill to care for her. When mum didn't have any bread, we went to collect bottles. The baby didn't have any milk. So we went to collect bottles so we could get food. Street social workers rescued Svetlana, and the family has been enrolled into a year-long program which supports them until her mother, Natasha, can get back on her feet. Every week, they meet up with other families who faced similar problems. These classes are really useful and interesting for us. We learn lots of new things. We have to talk about our experiences, and now we are like one big happy family. We've got two major aims. First of all, is to uh, help Turkey street children directly. And the second aim is to sensitize uh, the public at large and the politicians on the issue of child labor. Uh, the biggest frustration is the indifference of uh, state officials. This issue is still underestimated. It is underestimated how grave it is, how uh, dangerous it is for the future of the country. Uh, there are open-minded politicians that already understand that addressing social issues can be beneficial for, for the future can provide a stable development, sustainable development of the country in 20 years. But not everybody understands it so far. In the transition to the market economy, our country found itself in uncharted territory. So as we walk down this path, it is very important to learn about the international experience. The international organizations bring their knowledge. They also sponsor the beginning stages of the new innovative projects. Back in her office, Vera tries to contact Yuri's mother to see if she could meet up with her and provide any support. I think that she had drank a lot before talking to me. It, it was obvious she was drunk. She says that uh, sometimes she is drinking, but it's not the main reason why uh, her son has, ha, had left uh, the house. In fact, there are some difficulties in relations between uh, her son and his stepfather. Frankly, I, I haven't felt that she, she is really sorry that her son is not at her. Yuri knows it's only a matter of time before things on the street could get worse. He told us that maybe he could live with his grandmother in the countryside, two hours' drive from St. Petersburg. I'd be so happy to see my grandma. I'll give her a big kiss. I'll be very happy to see her. I want to live with my grandma. She's lovely. But I feel sorry for Max. I don't want to leave him alone. Max and me are friends. We are good friends, and I don't want to leave him alone. Because he would feel bad about me. Oh dear. No luck. The door's locked. Unfortunately, Yuri's grandmother had gone away. Dear Granny, I came to visit you, but you are not at home. I miss you very much. Kisses, Yura. If he stays here, in this village, 
without without school, without any possibility to get job in future with his grandmother. It will be more psychologically comfortable for him, and he wants to stay here. But uh, on the other side, if he lives in St. Petersburg, she, he won't have family, he, he will live at the street. The ultimate solution can be either to find a guardian for him in St. Petersburg or to, to take him to a shelter, though I'm not sure that it will be easy. Uh, so it's disputable what situation is better for him. Frankly, I, I don't see any future for him in both situations. I know that to become a doctor, you need to enter a medical institute. But I don't know whether it will work out or not. If I really wanted to become a doctor, I would have been at home studying now. But something's stopping me. I wish everyone could live at home with families that don't fight and argue. What I'd really like is to live with my mum and real dad, without my stepfather. That would be the best thing.